Hey everyone, hey, my name is Mac and I'm you know, hanging out with George. Um, in, um, I've always been very interested in people's stories, people's journeys. I think people's stories can be very, very, you know, uh, strong and, and very potent tools to like transform um, uh, people's lives, uh, you know, because people out there can, can draw inspirations from that. And so I wanted to get into the nitty gritty of George's story. George is an undergrad at Harvard. and. Uh, so uh, we're going to spend the time together and uh, hope that inspires you out there. Hey, George, hey. Uh, yeah. can, can you tell me a bit of, uh, about your story and how, how you, you, you made it out to Harvard? Yeah, of course. So um, uh, I guess growing up, it was, all, it was always like, pretty instilled within me you know, from a pretty young age. Right. Um, uh, my parents kind of like, taught, like, told me, you know, you know, eventually we have to go to college and achieve like, higher education. Right. So it was always something that was in the back of my mind, I think, growing up. Right. And um, the fact that I also grew up in, a, you know, in an environment where uh, college uh, admissions and everything was uh, one of the primary goals for students. Right. Because a lot of, uh, I grew up in a predominantly Asian environment where um, uh, it was all, mm, it was all about like test scores and you know how to get like the perfect grades and everything right, right. because I think amongst like the Asian community I was uh, raised in, uh, a lot of these students and parents, you know, these parents basically perceived um, a good education, a higher education at like colleges and university and, right. and universities was crucial for uh, eventual success uh, defined in terms of jobs, you know, right. and stuff like that. And without getting a good education, it'd be difficult to uh, essentially receive a high paying job or a stable job mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, where, like, my parents uh, themselves didn't really emphasize that as much. They always right. kind of told me to really try my best. Uh, but um, it was definitely ingrained in me pretty early on. And um, uh, growing up, I always wanted somehow to impact this world uh, in a positive way. And in high school, um, I was dealing with uh, both of my grandfathers who lost their hearing. Mm. And it was very, very difficult to communicate with either of them. And for one of them, I actually had to communicate via like pen and paper because he simply didn't want to wear his hearing aid and because it was hurting his ears so much rather than benefiting him. And um, essentially, I really wanted to do something about it. And I did some research on that in, in high school, and I realized that you know, like in the future, I really want to like somehow um, make like large scale change in hearing loss, loss technologies and hearing loss uh, as a field uh, in general. Mm -hmm. So um, I really tried my best to learn material in high school the best I could. So then, uh, perhaps you know, when I when I got older, I'd be able to attend a university where I'd able to have the resources and the education and the like-minded students around me who would be able to be like a catalyst for uh, creating that type of change. Oh, lovely. Well, it sounds like hearing aid, there's a bit of an emotion in that for you. Is that what you're studying over here, Harvard? Um, or are you kind of like tailoring your curriculum one way or the true. other for you to be able to get the education that will allow you to be able to take that path and find a lasting solution to that? Uh, could you read that? Like, like, you mentioned hearing aid. Like, yeah. Your, your grandfathers, your grandparents kind of had a problem with that. Yeah. And it looks like that's like a very important thing for you. There's a bit of an emotion in it for you. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's, you, from, what I, from what I hear you say is that you want to be able to uh, be a catalyst within that domain so that you can find a lasting solution to that. Uh, here at Harvard, have you been able to find resources that allow you to get the education you need in order to like, in order to take that path, that career path at all? Oh yeah, definitely. I think a lot of, uh, there was actually one class I took this semester on uh, intractable problems in developing countries. Right. And it essentially uh, discussed like how there are a lot of institutional voids in right. many of these developing countries that prevent you know these changes from being made. Right. And honestly, for some time when I got to Harvard, I was kind of a little bit disillusioned in the sense that like, you know, I felt like I didn't have the necessary like knowledge, the technical knowledge to be able to impact and actually like have a any type of you know benefit in the field mm. but I think after taking this class uh, I was really empowered by the professor in saying that you know like yeah it doesn't really matter like you know if you want to pursue a problem you can pursue it whenever you want really mm. you know like you really don't have to like you could wait you know an extra 20 years work somewhere else gain that experience but it's definitely not something that's necessary if you want to work on something you can work on it immediately mm. as long as you set your mind to it and although like that, that's you know stuff that like people have like said in the past Hearing that from a professor himself who's worked on you know, so many different projects in these developing countries, it's honestly pretty crazy. And uh, I think the content in the class was really, it was really uh, supportive of that. And I think that's definitely one of the, that was really, really important for me, at least here for my education. And uh, that's a big reason in terms of why 
I really want to pursue hearing loss currently. Wow, lovely. So, you know, at a place like this, I think for people out there, and even for myself, when I was coming, I was always worried about um, like there being so many incredibly talented and smart people. How have you adapted to that? You know, has that had any psychological impact on you? And if it did or it did not, like how have you been able to build sort of the adaptation to that or that impreviousness to the environment and having so many smart people coming together? Definitely, definitely. Uh, so I think when I first got here, it was definitely pretty challenging in the sense that like all these people you're surrounded by are so insanely smart. Right. And sometimes it's easy to get kind of lost in the sense that like, oh man, like it becomes like a comp like a personal competition type of thing. Not even a personal competition. Like you're competing with your peers in the sense that like you want to show that you you're better than not necessarily better than them. But right. like when you put in an environment where there's so many smart people, it's like everybody's not directly competing against each other, but there was definitely some type of thing where I was questioning my own abilities and you know relating that to others' abilities, and I think that was during that was a, a time period that definitely required some adjusting, right. some adjustments. But um, I think now I guess I'm like at a pretty good place in the sense that like I know what I can do is really sparked. I, I can use these people who are around me who are doing amazing things as a big motivation for me to push even harder at what I'm doing. Right. But at the end of the day, like me creating and affecting change. Is really dependent on myself and wow. you know it's like regardless of you know how much I compare myself with other people you know that's not going to be the reason why I'm able to create change rather it's you know my ability to think you know examine internally and seeing how I can you know, create that's change. lovely that's lovely you know, I like the fact that I think you, it, look, it looks like you're pretty grounded in and as much as you respect people for, for their smartness you also believe in yourself and you don't it doesn't seem like you do, you're the kind of person who derives your sense of self-worth from other people it comes from the internal that's yeah. lovely so how would you describe your overall experience at Harvard? Uh, it's it's honestly really really amazing I think uh, um, I've, I've met a lot of amazing people who have you know taught me a lot of things and in the sense that like you know these are life lessons that previously I perhaps had uh, been embedded in my brain perhaps because growing up and my parents instilled these values within me but coming here you know a lot of these values were solidified right. via both uh, peers as well as you know the teachers here right. you know that they really push you to you know to try your very best to achieve your greatest potential right. and you know I, I really really appreciate uh, this institution for being able to do that you know right, right. Uh, I think a lot of times people might say, you know, uh, I had a pretty bad experience over here, over here, and they'll blame it on the school. And while like the school may be partially part, like uh, partially the reason for that, right. I honestly don't believe that it's the entire part. Because I think for some time I was also blaming the school, you know, the school's not doing this. Because a big thing Harvard's, I guess, like known for is that they have a lot of resources, but every, every student's pretty independent in the sense that the school's not going to spoon feed you or anything. Like you're gonna have to proactively find those resources yourself in order for you to reap the benefits of it. Right. So you, could, you can't really come in expecting like, you know, people to you know, hand everything, put it right up in front of your face. You really have to go out there and find it yourself. And I think learning a lot of these very, very important life lessons has been very, very crucial for me.